Thank you so much for tuning into Alabaster Sparks with Tiffany Hayes, where we are inspiring and enriching thoughts. So today, guys, we have Ivy Onyale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have her back today. So let me just tell you guys who Ivy is. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist, life coach, and a working mom. She has um, the website, thehappyworkingmom.com. Check her out. She helps working mom, moms find their identity and discover a fulfilling work-life balance. Balance is so important. She has a mom plan and self-discovery guide, and she's a blogger. Hi, yes. Ivy. Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you. So great to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, I want to be respectful of your time. So I'll go right into this interview. Um, so let me ask you this. With our mission-based living theme, what compelled you to become a Christian life coach? So I know you're a therapist. Yes. Also a Christian life coach. So you yes. have the um, the beauty of a double-edged sword here. You can meet people on either side. So what compelled you to actually become the therapist and a life coach? Well, on the therapy side, I became a therapist really because of my struggle with postpartum depression, as well as I had, you know, someone very dear to me who was also struggling with other mental health issues. So that was on the therapy side. On the life coach side, when I became a mom, I just felt like, you know, everything was just upside down. And I felt like I couldn't really find other women that I could connect with who could encourage me. It just felt like the people around me were perfect. They all seemed too perfect. And so I was like, you know what? I'm an imperfect person and I'd love to help other imperfect women, you know, build their lives, find more balance and just get joy out of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So again, what I hear is that it, it, it derived from experience. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how the Lord uses those things that we don't enjoy and yes. <laughs> turn them into things that not only do we overcome, but we get to help other people overcome as well. Absolutely. You know, it's so funny because of course at the time when I was struggling and trying to figure out what am I going to do now that I'm a mom, how am I going to figure out all my ambitions mm -hmm. at the time? It just felt so awful. But mm -hmm. now that I'm out of it, looking back, helping other women, it all makes sense. It all yeah. really makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. The Lord definitely orders our steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm also reminded that there is absolutely nothing too hard for the Lord. Oh, no, he will, he will, you know, put you through the fire, but he will not leave you. He will walk with you through the fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, through coaching, I know mm -hmm. it is a Christian, um, you're a Christian life coach. Now, yes. how do you, do you only work with believers or do you work with an abroad of different women? How does that work? So I mostly work with believers because... Mm -hmm. My mindset comes from God being the center of my world. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I teach. I teach with scripture and, you know, when women are struggling, I take them back to the Bible. So if you're really not a believer, it is going to be a struggle for you uh -huh. to understand that mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, he's the core of everything. Absolutely. Um, so if we're going to come out of anything, we need the core to be, to be tightened. Um, which is only by God, so that we too can be tightened to come out of it. Mm -hmm. So you touched on your experience with postpartum depression and having someone close to you um, dealing with different mental illnesses. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, Ivy, how did you combat those negative thoughts that were happening in your head? Well, first of all, I prayed like nobody's business. I am telling you because it was like nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I reached out. Actually, back then, um, I was by myself. My husband was on deployment. I actually took my baby and we went back home to Nigeria. And for, I think it was about three months, mm -hmm. we just lived with my parents in Nigeria. And it was wonderful, you know, mm -hmm. being close to the church, having people pray on me, having people love me, having people help me with the baby. I realized I could not do it by myself. And I, I can be very stubborn. Let me tell you, I'm one of those mm -hmm. women who tends to be like, I can do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. But this 
time I said, you know what, I surrender. I need my family around me. And so I flew back and it was the most wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. So what I hear is accept the help when it's needed. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There there was no shame. I was like, you know what, I I can't do this by myself. I'm Mm -hmm. no one. Let me Mm -hmm. go and get help. And it was Mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, what I'm thinking is that goes right back to mission-based living. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded that in order for us to stay in alignment Mm -hmm. um, with the will of the Lord, there there is going to be rocks in the road. There's going to be valleys. There's there's going to be mountaintops. But it is how we respond to these different things. Um, And in Mm -hmm. your case, it was going back home to your parents. In other yes. people's cases, it, it may be talking to a friend, whatever the case may be, there absolutely. is there is absolutely a need for support around us. Yes. Yes. It was a lesson in humility for me as well, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to say, you know what, I can't do this by myself. And God was really pushing me. You need to go back to your parents. And I was mm-hmm. like, What? I've been gone for how many years? How can I then go back? <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't step back. Sometimes we have to step aside and allow God to just use us and move us. And that was the most wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if we think about the story of, of Ruth and Naomi, mm-hmm. and how Naomi had to go back. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah. <laughs> that was, I'm sure was challenging going back mm-hmm. to Bethlehem for her. But at the same time, that's where the blessings were. So when we think about a mission-based living or Uh think about mission-based living, it sounds like your blessing, a part of your blessings were back in Nigeria so that you can gather yourself and be ready for what's to come next. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't submit to that, I don't think I would be able to do the work that I'm doing right now. Actually, I know I would not be able to do the work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Wow. That's good. That's good. I hope that broke through to someone that will be listening right then um, that sometimes Mm -hmm. it's best to go back so that you can go even further forward. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some results your clients can expect when working with you as a coach? Okay. So after my clients work with me, they can expect number one to truly learn how to put their mask on first, put the oxygen mask on yourself first Mm -hmm. before you put it on your kids, your husband, your family members. Mm -hmm. You can expect to now having their schedule time for themselves, whether it's time to exercise, time to eat lunch, time to take a nap, time to be with friends. They can expect to face their fears head on, those fears that lead to the voices that say, I'm not good enough. I'm a mom now, so I can accomplish X, Y, Z. They mm-hmm. face the fears head on. They understand why they have those fears and they're able to use words mm-hmm. to combat those fears. You know, mm-hmm. They can expect to learn how to reach out because most of the moms that work with me, when they come to me, they have nobody around them. I mean, they physically have people around them, but emotionally they're, mm-hmm. they're cut off. So mm-hmm. they learn how to reach out for some for support of other women how to connect with other women how to make themselves open so that they can bless other women and other women can be you know also be a blessing in their lives you know mm-hmm. they will expect to be able to be happier for them to learn how to set goals that they can actually achieve and for them to be able to learn how to manage and balance things i always teach my moms though you can have it all. However, you can't have it all at the same time. So Mm -hmm. don't expect to have everything going for you. And I also teach them that there's no such thing as a perfect mom and a perfect wife. No Mm -hmm. such thing. So they'll be able to also learn how to give themselves grace Mm -hmm. to be able to learn how to fall, to learn the lesson in the fall and to be Mm -hmm. able to pick themselves up. No shame, no judgment, all of those things gone. Mm. That sounds amazing. Mm. Sounds amazing. And it sounds like it's, they definitely, your clients get more than um, learning how to balance life. They get that, that support system to help them process what's actually going on in their world. Um, Yeah. Having that person there to listen and to um, just be that, that, that friend that they need for that time. Um, to again to be the best that they can be uh, in their lives but sometimes again 
you know, as mothers, I think we get stuck because we want to be, <laughs> we want to be the best mom or the best wife, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, it is always, it should always be a goal in reference to uh, being the best that you could be um, yes. and not the best that, that you just want to be. Does that make sense? That makes all the sense in the world, you know, mm -hmm. and depending on whatever situation that you're going through, your skills will change. Mm -hmm. So if I'm having a lot of hardship in my life right now, my best is going to look different. Mm -hmm. But if life is light and airy and everything is wonderful. My best will also look different. So mm -hmm. allowing yourself to give yourself grace and to say, life is not always going to look perfect, mm -hmm. but either way, I'm going to be thankful and I'm going to not push through, but I teach my moms not how to push through, but how to actually ask for what they need in that mm -hmm. moment. What does that sound like? So for example, say I'm a young mom with a crying baby and I have, you know, some family members living with me, baby's crying and I'm just like, I'm exhausted. So naturally, you know, we'll think, you know, in the old mindset, mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm supposed to do everything for this baby. But in this moment, I need to sleep for 30 minutes. So then you approach your loved ones and you say, you know what? I'm really exhausted. I feel like crying. I am tired. Can you please take the baby for 30 minutes so I can go put my feet up and take some rest? Mm -hmm. Asking for what you need. There's no shame in it. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. Ivy. Our time has come. To <laughs> Our time has come to an end. But if I could ask you for that mother that's listening, um, mm -hmm. that is just stressed out. They they are full of anxiety. They're crying. I mean, they're they they are just overwhelmed. Is the best yeah. word to sum that up. Yeah. What would you say to them if she, if she was sitting in front of you? Um, that came to your your therapy practice yeah. or therapist practice or yeah. coaching. What right. would you? What advice would you give to her? Find help. Find one person who will be supportive, whether helping you with tasks or emotionally supportive, being able to give you a hug, being able to say "I love you," being able to say "It is going to be okay." Find somebody who is safe, who is willing to help you, whether it's a professional, a loved one, a neighbor, family member, another mother, whoever it is, a grandma in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. find somebody to reach out to somebody because that isolation, ooh, let me tell you, yeah. it is not, it is not we need people. We need absolutely, people. absolutely. So that, that just reminded me that no situation will last forever. Absolutely. Okay? No situation will last forever. And so you guys are listening to Ivy, who is a life coach, who is a therapist, but this derived from her experience of postpartum depression. Yes. This derived from her having to get her mind together so that mm -hmm. she can be of help to other people. And that looks different for all of us. There's no one, absolutely no one, that, that brings us through this life without having that moment of having to renew our minds. The scripture says that we have to renew our minds. So for us to think that we don't would be foolish and out of context of the scripture, okay? So you're listening to a professional therapist. You're listening to a certified life coach who's saying, hey, I'm doing this only because I accepted the help when I needed it. And so to those who are listening, that is, that is going back and forth with help, with receiving it. And I know as believers, sometimes talking about a therapist, talking about a counselor, or anyone of that nature can be one of those words that you don't want to hear. But you've also heard Ivy share, if you talk to a friend, if you talk to someone, a pastor, someone, how, whoever you want to put in that slot where someone may say, therapist, it doesn't have to be that for you, but find someone that can help you, that will listen to you, and that will not judge you for what you're saying. Okay? Right. Thank you so much for coming back on, um, Ivy. I truly, truly, truly appreciate you. Now, let me ask you this. How can someone get a hold of you? 
So if they're looking for coaching, if they're a Christian mom looking to figure out how to balance things, you can find me on the happyworkingmom.com. And um, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook as the happy working mom. But if you're in California and you're a woman struggling with anxiety or depression, toxic relationships, you can find me at the Zinnia practice. Zinnia is Z-I-N-N-I-A, the Zinnia practice.com. Also find me on Facebook and Instagram as the Zinnia practice. Thank you so much, Ivy. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to Alabaster Spocks with Tiffany Hayes, where we are inspiring and enriching the thought patterns of the believer. Bye now.